Hello, friends. This is Mike Williams of the Sage Cray Radio Hour. I would like to thank Martin Kenny for allowing me to upload this presentation. Martin is a student of syncretism, which is the science of harmonizing the different teachings, cultures, and schools of thought from the ancient mystery schools. His work is very deep, and he takes the theory of geocentrism to the next level. If you are not familiar with the Cosmic Egg Theory, it is recommended you watch Martin's presentation with Santos Bonacci. The link to that presentation, along with Martin's YouTube channel, Flat Earth Universe, can be found in the description box below. And so without further ado, here's Martin Kenny. Hi. Today the topic of my presentation is Cosmic Egg and the Fantastic Four. Have you ever wondered why we have four seasons in our year? Or why we have four cardinal points, north, south, east and west? Why is a leap year every four years? Why are there four parts in a day? Sunrise, sunset, midday and midnight. How about the fact that our moon has four phases that occur every four weeks? Why four? Coincidence? Maybe. But consider this. Human beings have four limbs, two arms and two legs, four fingers and a thumb, four toes and a thumb. Did you know humans have four canine teeth and four wisdom teeth? How about the four main human blood types? A positive, B positive, AB positive and O positive. Speaking of blood, did you know that the blood, our blood is made up of four main components? Plasma, white blood cells, platelets and red blood cells. What about our hearts that pump this blood? Also divided into four chambers, the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Even human bodily tissue is divided into four types, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle and nervous tissue. Our brains, yep, also divided into four main sections, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe. Did you know that all DNA is made up of four base elements? Adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. What about the fact that humans have five sensory organs and functions? Four of them localized to the head area. Mouth to taste, nose to smell, ears for hearing, eyes for vision. The fifth sense being skin to feel, of course. But get this, did you know our skin has four main receptors that respond to touch, pressure, cold, heat, and pain? Not forgetting the four main senses of taste, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. Now, earlier on, I spoke about our four moons phases, the waxing phase, the waning phase, the full moon phase and the new moon phase. But how about the fact that all women on earth at some point in their lives experience menstrual cycles which are affected by these four weekly cycles of the moon? Even more interestingly, a menstrual cycle itself happens in four stages. The bleeding stage, the follicular stage, the ovulatory stage and the luteal stage. I know. Crazy, right? But there's more. What about the four base components needed for organic life to survive within our realm? Proteins, lipids, nucleic acids and carbohydrates? Or our four base states of matter? Solids, liquids, gases and plasma. Not forgetting, of course, our four main greenhouse gases. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Is it not interesting that every single flying insect on Earth has four wings? Except for flies, that is. What about the metamorphic four stages of an insect's life cycle? The egg stage, the larva stage, 
the pupa stage and the adult stage, or the four stages of a cell's mitosis. I'll let you look that one up for yourselves. Even in mathematics, we all know that there are four basic principles, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Four is the number of the square. Our three-dimensional reality is built on four-sided structures. Four-sided bricks that build four corner rooms, which make up four-sided houses. Four-sided tables, four-sided sheets of paper, books, screens, cars, etc, etc. Even the very core structure of our physical sciences is primarily divided into four. Chemistry, physics, biology, and mathematics. I'm sure you can now see the divine syncretic pattern of four within our physical, everyday reality. Four is everywhere and in everything, even embedded within the fabric of our collective cultures on Earth. For instance, is it not interesting that four is the only number in the English language that is equal to the number of letters in its name? The number four, or the word four, has four letters. Or isn't it also interesting that of all the words listed as vulgar in the English dictionary, exactly half are four-lettered words? I won't repeat them though. What about the four universal primary colours? Red, yellow, green and blue? Even in religion, this rule of four is not exempt. For instance, did you know that in Judeo-Christian faith, the Hebrew word for God is a four-letter word known as the Tetragametron, Yahweh, Y-A-H-W. Or that in Islam, there are four main books, the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and the Quran. And even in Vedic Hinduism, there are also four main books, the Rig Veda, the Sama Veda, the Yajur Veda and the Athava Veda. What about the four noble truths in Buddhism? Dukkha, Samadaya, Naroda and Maja. Not forgetting, of course, the four main gospels of Jesus in the Christian Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. What about the four corners of the earth spoken of in the Bible? The four winds of the earth, the four horsemen of the apocalypse in the book of Revelations, or the four ages of man? Four, 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 four. Why four? Now, let's look at other areas of our social culture um, associated with this number four. In politics, for instance, is it not peculiar that every single world government, presidential, state and political election on earth is held in four year cycles? Even in business and finance, they say the stock market runs in four-year epicycles that happen in four stages. The first stage being the consolidation stage, second, the upward advancement stage, third, the culmination stage, and fourth, the declination stage. Our sporting cultures are no different. Why are most, if not all, major sporting events and competitions also held in four-year cycles? The Olympics? the football, rugby, cricket, and all other World Cups every four years. What about the four main swimming strokes? Breaststroke, backstroke, crawl, and butterfly, or the four stages of an athletics relay? There are even four suits in a deck of playing cards, hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Now, I've already mentioned the cycles of four in politics. But I came across some quite interesting facts whilst researching this topic. It's no secret that the USA is the political capital of this part of Earth. So I thought it would be a good idea to highlight some interesting facts regarding American politics and the number four. For instance, did you know that the American Constitution was written during the term of the fourth American president, James Madison. Also, did you know, to date, four American presidents have been assassinated. 
Abraham Lincoln, James A. Garfield, William McKinley, and John F. Kennedy, of course. Make that what you may. As you can see, you don't have to be a genius to notice how syncretic and powerful the number four is within our reality. In fact, four was considered by many great philosophers and mathematicians as the sacred number of Earth and mankind. It was said to be the number that symbolizes the principles of putting ideas into form. The ancient Pythagoreans believed that the number four, or the tetrad, symbolized the reflection of God in man, expressed by the four parts of the soul, mind, opinion, science, and sense. We also see this line of thinking with many ancient cultures who attributed creation and form to the star tetrahedron, or Makaba, which is a kind of star-shaped pyramid structure with four triangular faces and four corners interlinked to create what is considered a sacred, divine, geometric shape and structure found in mathematic ratios, harmonics, light, and cosmology. The four triangular shapes of this star tetrahedron are also said to correspond with the four elemental building blocks of life, earth, air, fire, and water. Now, one of the reasons I've done this Fantastic Four presentation is to prove conclusively that our universe, creation, and reality as we know it is not random. There are no mistakes when it comes to this, and there is most definitely divine order and structure all around us, whether we're aware of it or not. Another reason is to show you how syncretic knowledge, observations and research can be used to gain a better understanding of how our universe works physically as well as metaphysically. I'm assuming that if you're watching this now, you've already watched my geocentric cosmic egg universe three part presentation. If you haven't, I highly recommend you watch that before watching the next segment of this presentation. In this next part of my presentation, I'm going to reconstruct my cosmic egg universe model using this tetrad syncretic pattern of four. So if you can recall from um, the cosmic egg presentation, we said that in the beginning um, was the void, okay? The space of infinite space, time and potential, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, source, where everything begins from. We then said that this infinite space, time and potential, source or God, or creative energy, created this, what is the um, star tetrahedron that we're talking about earlier on, the Makaba, okay, the first star, the Vesca Pisces, um, that we always talk about in es uh, esoteric circles, um, okay, uh, this is the, the trio of creation, um, sustenance, and destruction, right? We then said that uh, this creative force, this um, trio, um, created the um, cosmic egg, a torus field, essentially, okay? What mainstream science today calls um, cosmic background microwave radiation, okay? That's what NASA tells us, that our universe is made up of um, cosmic background microwave radiation, which is a torus field, okay? So uh, this is now the womb of creation. This is where, this is the first form of our universe, okay? And this is where we see the first um, form of our fantastic four, because now, okay, we've got an up, a down, um, uh, an east, a west, north, south, east, and west, okay? We've now got direction, because remember in the void, outside of this, there is no direction. It's infinite, it's infinite space, it's infinite time. This is where space and time begins, inside the cosmic egg. We then said that um, they created the torus field, um, or the vortex that runs through it, okay? The cosmic axis, up at the top, down at the bottom, okay? And then left and right, okay? And this is uh, the keeper, the father of all the winds, as we're saying. This is where, this is the connection, the umbilical cord, um, that links us inside our universe with the multiverse 
outside. Okay, so right. We then said they created, God created, God separated the waters above from the waters below. Okay, this is where the earth comes in. Okay, this is the pyramid Bumandala that we talked about in the uh, presentation. Okay, um, this is where we see our second fantastic four um, inside um, our universe. Okay, earth, air above us, waters below us, and fire being the heavenly realms and the hellish realms. Okay, so now we see those four building blocks of life that we always talk about. Earth, air, water, and fire. Okay, right. Talked about the firmament, okay, the heavens above, right. We said that in mainstream science, they tell us that everything began with the Big Bang at the top, okay, the point of singularity, right, and everything spread out into the universe. You know, from the Big Bang, from the point of singularity, um, the dog star, the god star, um, the Sirius star system is up here. That's the first realm. The second realm is the um, Omega Century um, galaxy. And then we've got the Andromeda galaxy. And then we've got the Milky Way galaxy, which is um, just above the firmament. Okay. So those are the four heavenly realms. Okay. The Vedics go into even more detail. They call that the top one, the um, Satya um, Loka or the Brahma Loka. The next one was the Tapa Loka. The next one is the Yana Loka. The next one is the Maha Loka. Right. As above, so below. They said the bottom, there's also four hellish realm. The um, Talatala Loka, the Mahatala Loka, the Rasatala Loka and the Patala Loka. Right. So those are the four heavenly realms and the four hellish realms. Right. Fantastic four heavenly realms fantastic for hellish realms so here in the skies is where we see our next fantastic four astrologers will tell you that our uh, 12 signs of the zodiac are always divided into into four okay um cancer libra capricorn and aries are the cardinal points of the 12 signs of the zodiac okay so cancer is always associated with uh, water and summer, right? Libra is air and autumn. Um, Capricorn is earth and winter. Aries is fire and spring. These are the zodiacal cardinal signs. Again, divided into four, okay? Now, going back to our earth, we had said that um, the earth um, runs diametrically across inside our cosmic egg, right? It's the plane of inertia, similar to, to something like this, right? So if this is the cosmic egg, right? If this is the torus field of our universe inside the multiverse, right? And this is inside our universe, this would be the earth running diametrically across our torus field egg, right? The waters above being the atmospheres up here and the waters below being um, the actual waters below inside our torus field. Okay, so that's what we said the earth was. We also remember, if you remember, we said that um, the Egyptians said that in the beginning, um, uh, the first form of creation was the Ben Ben, which translates um, to pyramid, okay, or mound, mound or pyramid. So we said that the earth was a pyramid, as above, so below. So pyramid above, a pyramid below. Okay, we said that in Greek mythology, Mother Gaia with the two children, Prometheus and Epimetheus. Yeah. So if we focus on this pyramid, right, using our fantastic four um, uh, syncretic method, right, we then say there are four concentric rings of land. Okay. These are the uh, four corners of the earth spoken of in the Bible. Right, the Garden of Eden at the center where we are here, or Midgard, Garden of Eden at the center, or Midgard, where we are here, Earth, what we call Earth, or um, uh, Vanayam, as it was called by the Norse, um, um, Jutoinam um, being the next ring, and Muspelem being the last ring. So, those are the four corners of the earth spoken of in the Bible, right? Okay, um, as above, so below, there's probably a a pyramid that sits underneath as well. You also remember we said that um, at one stage this um, used to be 
um, at the top. So it was a proper pyramid, but something happened to the capstone of this pyramid of Mandala. Um, this is now the sunken continent of Atlantis. This is Eden, this is Hyperborea, um, etc, etc. Okay, so if you remember from the Cosmic Egg video, we said each of these four concentric rings of land has got a torus field around it. So this whole thing is inside a torus field, which is the cosmic egg, okay? And each of these rings of land has got its own torus field surrounding it. So at the center, right, they've got their own torus field, right? What we know as the Aurora Borealis, okay? Electromagnetic field, as NASA and science tells us. So that's the torus field around the Garden of Eden at the center, okay? On the outside, right, on the, um, around the Antarctica, is another torus field, which is known as the Aurora Australis, okay? This is the Van Allen belt that um, NASA tells us about. There is another Van Allen belt around this outer ring of land and another Van Allen belt around that outer bit of land. So NASA tells us that there are five Van Allen belts inside our universe. The four around the four concentric rings of land, the fifth one being um, the one um, that covers us um, inside um, the universe, okay? Separating us from the multiverse, the outside, right? We also said that um, um, these different um, rings of land are different dimensions, okay? So the center is a different dimension with a different frequency. Where we are is a different dimension. This is the third 3D world, third dimension. Out here is a different dimension. Out there is a different dimension. NASA tells us, right that aliens are extraterrestrials so if you break that word down extraterrestrials you know they're telling us quite clearly extra means more of terrestrial the root word terrain extraterrestrials more terrain beings from the terrain you know outside in outer space this is outer space okay not up in the sky somewhere outer space is outside the space that we are in Okay, right, going back to the Fantastic Four, right, we've now got four concentric rings of land with four toroidal fields. If you remember, we also said that there were um, four suns and four moons in our universe, right? At the center, right, we've got um, Mercury, which is actually androgynous, so we count that as two. It's both a sun and a moon. This is Mercury, this is Hermes, Hermod, um, um, black sun of intent, um, all the same thing, right? Around our toroidal field, we've got our sun and moon, Apollo and Artemis, okay? That revolve around our torus field, okay? Up and down, right? On the outside, they've got their own sun and moon, which are Mars and Venus. So Mars and Venus revolving around um, that torus field, okay? And in the last toroidal field, they've got... Um, uh, Saturn and Jupiter, okay? Saturn and Jupiter revolving around this last toroidal field, all right? So that's four suns and four moons, right? So we've got Saturn, Mars, Apollo, and Mercury being the four suns in our universe, okay? And then we've got Jupiter, Venus, um, Artemis, which is our moon, and Mercury being the four moons in our universe. So four concentric rings of land, right? With four toroidal fields, four suns and four moons, right? These four things are, the, are what create our uh, four seasons, okay? So we've got four seasons, we all know the four seasons, right? Summer, autumn, winter, and spring, four seasons. We also know about the four times of the day that we experience every day. Sunrise, midday, sunset, and midnight, right? Four, again, okay? There are no coincidences. There are no mistakes, okay? What else do we have four of? We've got the four paths that the sun takes along the ecliptic um, during the course of the year, right? The summer solstice, the winter solstice, um, the fall equinox, and the um, spring equinox, okay? right the swatch sticker that we see okay what about the four phases of the moon the waxing waning full moon and new moon four again 
All of it is syncretic with these four concentric rings of land, the four toroidal fields, four, 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 four. This is how you syncretically put pieces together. This is how nature talks to us, if we're paying attention, that is. Okay? What else do we see uh, uh, four of? Let's move on to, um, to here, closer to home, where we are, okay? We also discussed, if you remember, we've said that there's a toroidal field around our part of the earth, okay? This is the Van Allen belt around us. At the center here, there's a toroidal field, which is the Aurora Borealis, okay? NASA tells us that inside our earth, there are four um, atmospheres, okay? What are these four atmospheres? The troposphere, right? the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere, right? These are the four atmospheres inside our universe, right? They also tell us that the earth, inside the earth, are four layers, okay? The crust, the mantle, right? The inner core and the outer core, okay? This is what they tell us. Um, that would be underneath the earth, inside the earth, right? So that's four. What about here at the bottom, right? Another four. What about the four major oceans? They tell us on Earth, there are four, traditionally, there are four main oceans. The Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean, right? These are the four oceans on Earth. What about the four traditional continents on Earth? Okay. Um, Africa, um, yeah, so Africa, the Americas, okay, Europe, and Asia, okay? Those are the four traditional continents on our path, part of the Bumandala, with the four oceans, right? This is where the four times of the day occur, sunrise, sunset, um, um, midday and midnight, the four seasons, right? This is where that happens, what we experience every day. The four... Um, um, the waxing, waning of the moon, you know, the, the four different uh, uh, um, phases of the moon, the four different phases of the sun during the year. We experience that here on earth. Okay, so that's not even a debate. That is not up for debate. That is something we experience. Those syncretic fours are things that we experience. If we go back to the center in the Bible, it tells us the Garden of Eden is divided, into, is divided by four rivers. Okay. The Pishon, the Gihon, the Tigris, and the Euphrates, okay? If we look at Vedic cosmology, they tell us that in Shambhala, right, at the center, right, there are four islands. It's divided into four islands, okay, which are Jambudvipa, Ketumala, Badrasava, and um, Uttarakuru, right? Four, again. So that's the Bible telling us that the Garden of Eden is divided by four rivers, and that's Vedic cosmology, right? Indians, different type of religion, telling us that Shambhala or Eden is divided into four islands. Four, again. Okay? So, a lot of these fantastic fours, um, we experience ourselves. And this is how I've put together the universe. I've used this um, language of um, syncretism. Because syncretism is basically the language of the universe. This is God's language. This is how God speaks to us, okay? Or the universe speaks to us through syncretism if we are paying attention. We have to be paying attention, right? Anyone who says these things are coincidence is clearly not paying attention and is clearly not awake. And for me, it's a no-brainer, really. Absolute no-brainer, okay? Four is everywhere culture, in what we experience, in our sciences, um, as I've said before, in our politics, in finance, in, uh, in sport, in every facet, in every fabric of our existence, we see this syncretic code of four, okay? We can't ignore it. It would be extremely ignorant to ignore it. It is quite obvious as far as I'm concerned, okay? So, um, you know, I hope 
that I've proven to you that, you know, I've not just randomly uh, made this cosmic egg universe with the four islands and the four toroidal fields and the four suns and moons, which are wandering stars, um, you know, and the Garden of Eden um, up in my head randomly, right? There is method, um, there is structure, there is divi there's, uh, a, a divine, um, sacred, geometric, whatever you want to call it, order to everything. Everything is exactly as it should be, right? The four ages, right? I forgot to mention the four ages, right? The toroidal fields, the breathing in and out of the torus fields that I talked about, okay? The torus fields, they close and they open. That's what creates the four ages as well, which are longer seasons. We talked about the seasons that we experience, right? The first small season being our day, right? Sunrise, midday, sunset, and midnight. That's the first season that we experience. The, the second season we experience are the seasons of um, the phases of the moon, the waxing, waning, full and new moon, okay, which happen on a four weekly basis. The fourth season we experience are the ones created by the sun, uh, no, the third one, are the ones created by the sun, okay, which are summer, um, autumn, winter and spring, okay. And then the fourth age or the fourth season are the ages, the biggest season are the ages, the iron, the um, bronze, the silver, and the golden, right? The Vedics call them the Kali Yuga, the Dropara Yuga, the Treta Yuga, and the Satya Yuga, okay? So again, there are four seasons in our universe, right? This is how we, um, we discern this type of stuff. Prophets, or people who are known as prophets like Nostradamus, they weren't supernatural human beings. They were just able to um, understand and read um, this code of the universe, right? Things like Pi, the Fibonacci sequence, right? Um, syncretism, uh, like I'm doing now, right? You can, you can prophesy what's going to happen in the future if you know how the universe works, if you know how toroidal fields work, if you know how ages of consciousness work, if you know how the seasons work. You're able to prophesy what's to come because there is nothing new under the sun. If it's happened before, it's going to happen again. And it's happened before. Right? Nothing is new under the sun. Okay? So when I talk about this shift that's happening, or when I talk about 2020, the sun, you know, Mercury rising with the expansion of the toroidal fields and what's going to happen in 2020 and all that, it's not because I've got prophetic vision or anything. It's because I've come to understand, I hope, if I'm right, how all this works. The toroidal fields, the breathing in and out, okay? The expansion and the contraction, like Santa Spinacci was saying. You're able to know what's going to happen in the near future. You're able to see what will happen, uh, what's happened in the past as well, okay? All of this has happened in the past and it will happen in the future. Right. This is the cycle of life. This happens uh, in, in, in waves. The sine wave that we always talk about frequency happens in sine wave. OK, your heartbeat, your pulse. It's the same thing with the cycle of life. Ups and downs, peaks and troughs, in and out, duality. Now, like I always say in all my presentations, I'm not asking anyone to blindly believe or accept what I'm presenting. I'm simply asking that you listen and observe with a critical eye and an open mind and do your own research to verify or disprove what I'm saying. Okay. I'm not saying this is a hundred percent fact. I'm simply saying, here's the evidence, right? For my findings, for my research, for my understanding, right? Make up your own mind, scrutinize what I'm saying and correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. I'm also assuming that most of you watching this are consciously aware enough to know that not everything we're told, obviously, is a complete lie okay we all know that governments and corporations you know they they lie to some degree but we can't go too extreme and say that everything's a complete lie okay any psychologist will tell you that you know the best or the most effective lies are the ones where you stick as close to the truth as possible and this is what these elites have done right they've not made up a whole new lie that we live on a spinning ball and it's all a complete lie no there is some truth in what they're telling us as I've been trying to demonstrate 
with my presentations. It's not a complete lie. We have to be able to discern the truths from the half-truths. No different from the Bible and the, um, the Vedic texts and the Quran. Right? These are books of um, truth and not fact. They're not factual books. They're truthful books. We have to be able to discern what the facts are and what the truths are. Same thing with science that we're told, with mainstream science. When you watch the news, you have to be able to discern, you know, how much of the truth are they telling us? Again, not everyone can do this because not everyone is consciously aware or awake yet to, to, to notice these things. Okay, but these elites, right, that we call the elites, that have been running this realm for thousands of years, these bloodlines that go back to Egyptian, um, you know, Egyptian pharaohs, to the Roman Empire. These are the same bloodlines that are running the world today. Nothing's changed, right? Nothing's changed. The only difference is the illusion of freedom that we have today because of technology and other things that, that are used to distract us. But the system is still the same. Nothing's changed, okay? And these, you know, we can't assume that they're, 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 they're idiots. They're not, they're, right? They've managed to manipulate the truths, okay? So we've not been lied to, we've been manipulated, okay? Neil Tyson deGrasse, in one of his videos, actually admitted to this. So you understand, we've been fed a lie our entire, I want to call it a lie. We've been fed, it's a point of view thing, I think. We've been fed a, we've been, Earth has been misrepresented to us by geologists. Because the globes that you buy, that you rub your fingers over and you feel the Himalayas and you feel the Rocky Mountains. No, <laughs> no, okay? We've got to have the wisdom to discern truths from half-truths and lies as well. Some of it is complete lies, obviously, you know. So there are truths, there are lies, there are half-truths, you know, we have to be able to discern the difference, okay? So this conscious shift or this awakening that is happening, right, is happening now for a reason at this time. Like I've been saying, there are no coincidences, there are no mistakes um, in the universe, okay? Some of us at the moment are, are old souls, like I said in my Cosmic Egg presentation, we are old souls. Right? We are picking up these frequencies and these things a lot quicker than some of maybe the younger souls. Right? We're going to take a bit longer um, to, to, to wake up to these things. We talked about the three, um, um, the three energy, the three life forces within our realms. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Right? Creation, sustenance and destruction. There is a reflection of that here on earth with us the titans that are living up the script. Okay? There are some souls here who are Brahma souls, creative souls. These are the souls that are trying to ascend the collective. These are the souls who will be moving on um, to a different experience, right? To create, um, to help create um, the golden age from the inside out from Eden, like I've been saying, okay? There are those who have the Vishnu element, um, the Vishnu souls, right? These are the ones who are in the middle, the neutrals, okay? Um, they're not going in or out. They are here to keep the current paradigm going, to help bring forth the new age on this part of the Bumandala. And then on the other, on the, you know, complete end, we've got the um, Shiva souls, right? The fallen angels, okay? Who are going down and out. These are the destructive forces. The ones that are intent on bringing chaos, on confusion, who are, you know, lies. Um, sometimes they don't even know they're doing it. You know, it's all just part of the system. This is a beautiful thing. All of it is necessary. Duality is necessary. We must appreciate the whole thing. Unfortunately, most of us in the truth community, um, we're still stuck in playing the victim, saying that we're in a prison, we're, we're locked up, you know, this is a matrix, it's evil, it's bad. There's nothing evil about our reality. There's nothing bad about where we are, about what's happening. It's all meant to teach us. It's all meant to to help us grow along our cycle um, inside this cosmic egg, inside our universe, okay? This experience we're having right now is a tiny blip along our journey, along our soul's journey. You're only alive for a, for a few, you know, a few years, less than a hundred years, and then you move on. Your soul has a different experience. So this is a tiny lesson on that journey. So ultimately, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be upset about. 
we just need to try and understand what's going on. And once we understand it, there's no fear. You embrace it, right? And you look forward to the future and you enjoy the experiences, good and bad. It's all necessary. Right. Some of you will recognize what I'm saying, right? Some of you will think I'm absolutely batshit crazy, you know, and that's fine. You know, there's a time and a place for everything and for everyone. Uh, the same goes with, with this type of stuff. You know, we're all at different stages of conscious um, um, awareness. Um, some are way ahead. Some are just starting. Some are far away from it. And that's fine. If you resonate with it, great. If you don't, that's okay too. You know, it's not a problem. But before I leave, I just wanted to close my presentation with a very interesting um, uh, article or, or reading that I came across. Um, uh, one of the first things I did when I embarked on this syncretic Fantastic Four um, uh, research is I went to Google, as you do, and I just put four inside Google to see what would come up. And of course, Wikipedia came up and there was loads of information on the number four. Um, uh, a lot of it, I've incorporated it into this, uh, into this video. But one particular thing caught my eye, and I thought I have to share this with you. Um, you know, we all know that um, we are told these truths, truth hidden in plain sight, if we're paying attention. So nothing's really hidden from us, okay? We're just not told the full truth, okay? And this is one of those cases, and this was so telling and so relevant to this cosmic egg universe, to my, um, to my cosmic egg uh, model, okay? So I went to Google. I clicked on four, I went to Wikipedia, and in Wikipedia, under logic and philosophy, this is the first paragraph that came up right, and I quote, the symbolic meanings of the number four are linked to those of the cross and square, right? And then in quotation marks it says, almost from prehistoric times, the number four was employed to signify what was solid what could be touched and felt. Its relationship to the cross, and in brackets, four points, made it an outstanding symbol of wholeness and universality, right? A symbol which drew all to itself, close quote, right? And then it says, where lines of latitude and longitude intersect, they divide the earth into four portions, okay? I'm going to repeat that. They're telling us, right? Where lines of latitude and longitude intersect, they divide the earth into four portions. What four portions? The four concentric rings of land. Okay, I'll carry on reading. Throughout the world, kings and chieftains have been called, and in, in quotation marks, Lord of the Four Sons. Lord of the Four quarters of the earth. I'm going to repeat that again. It says, throughout the world, kings and chieftains have been called Lord of the Four Sons, Lord of the Four Quarters of the Earth. Right, which four sons? Like I've said, Saturn, Mars, Apollo, our sun, and Mercury. Lord of the Four Quarters of the Earth. Which four quarters of the earth, the four concentric rings of land, right? The four terrains with the different terrestrial beings, extraterrestrial beings on the four different terrains, the four quarters of the earth, right? And it ends by saying, by which is understood to the extent of their powers, both territorially and in terms of total control of their subjects' doings, all right? So these four sons are responsible right, for the subjects, for their subjects in each of their territories, right? So the four sons rule over the four lands. That's what they're telling us. This is what is known as truth hidden in plain sight. It's right there. This is on Wikipedia, a mainstream media platform. I'm not making this up. You can go on and Google it and check it for yourself. On that note, I uh, conclude my presentation. I hope... Um, I've been clear and concise. Um, those that resonate with it, I look forward, as usual, to your 
um, comments, to your constructive criticism, to your help in putting these pieces together. Um, if you can correct me, if you've seen I've made a mistake somewhere and you correct me, I, uh, I, I welcome that. Those who don't resonate with it, I know you'll attack me and you'll call me all kinds of names, um, but that's okay too. You know, that's all part of, of this whole thing. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.